Years ago, we began our series of meditations on the shorter and larger catechisms, and as well the Westminster Confession of Faith. We've gone to then, and we've gone to the Belgian Confession of Faith. And so I thought uh, maybe it's time to return once more to the shorter catechism for just a little bit until I receive revelation for something else to consider. And uh, we'll, we'll go through uh, some of the uh, questions there in that catechism. You recall that the catechism is written for children, actually. Uh, the uh, Reformed churches would use this uh, catechism to instruct their children in the essentials of the Christian faith. And one of the things that you will observe about this catechism is that it is very succinct, very concise, and this uh, answers uh, give to essential questions here uh, with regard to our faith. And so uh, it, it's a tremendous tool, not only for uh, young people, but also for even for our ministers who are preparing for the ministry. You will find that when we have uh, ordination exams, that quite often the answers to questions are formulated in the terms of the shorter catechism. <coughs> scriptures that support that. So uh, we'll take a look at this shorter catechism and review some uh, basic things which I hope will strengthen you. One more thing, I recall reading uh, a note by E.B. Moorfield, I believe it was, who talked about uh, coming across a young person and he could tell whether somebody was a, a shorter catechism boy or not uh, because th there was a certain uh, maturity to their Christian faith. And uh, it was because a lot of times they were trained in that catechism and their minds are structured. They have uh, a foundation for what they believe. And uh, so um, you will find, I think, there are many questions here that you will want to memorize, uh, at least think very deeply about. Uh, they are concise and, and often uh, very amenable to memorization. We'll just consider the first question today which is a familiar one. What is the chief end of man? And the answer is, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. When the Catechism raises the question of the chief end of man, it's asking what is the purpose of our existence? Why were we made? That's a question that uh, comes to many people today. They want to know what's the meaning of life. Why are they here? What's their purpose in this world? And many go about seeking to discover these things uh, in different ways. Many are still lost with regard to what it exactly it is uh, they are intended to do in life. The catechism question reorients our understanding of that. Quite often, the way that most folks will answer that question is to focus it on themselves. And it is, in psychological terms, the chief end of man is his self-actualization, his uh, realization of his own inner potentials, uh, his setting himself off for his own destination in life. And so a very humanistic, man-centered approach is given to this kind of answer. What is uh, my uh, significance in life? Well, I determine what my significance is. And I go about trying to establish it in different sorts of ways. Uh, the Bible, points us in a different direction. Rather than focusing on self and within and our own determination, we are to focus on God. And the purpose of our existence is to glorify God. That is to say that uh, we were made to praise God and to reveal the various uh, attributes of God that are uh, part of his character and who he is. It's not as though we can add to the glory of God by what we say about him or how we worship him, God is glorious in and of himself, and there can be no addition to his glory. But rather, as we glorify God, he is elevated in our own hearts and minds so that we uh, give to him the praise and thanksgiving that is due to him for his character and his being. So our chief end is to glorify God. That is to say that all of life is to be lived to the glory of God. That is the purpose which underlies everything that we should do. So it not only governs us as we worship God here on a Sunday morning, 
but in every activity of life, in the home, in the office, uh, at school, uh, wherever it may be, on the golf course, we are to glorify God. And that gives us a different perspective on things, a different perspective on life. We are subject to Him and to His care, and we seek to magnify His name. Uh, the other aspect of this is that we are to enjoy Him forever. We don't often appreciate this part of the catechism. We focus on the fact that we are to glorify God, and that is very much at the center of our minds. We are to live a God-centered life, uh, giving thanks to God, making our petitions to God for all things. But we are also to enjoy Him. We don't often think about God as one whom we would enjoy or have fellowship with. But this is the whole purpose of our redemption, that God would reconcile us to himself, bring us into his family as his very own children, and that we would have fellowship with him, that we would delight to be in his presence. You remember the psalmist said, I have, how does he put it in Psalm 73? I have no greater joy on earth, but this chief delight is in, in God and heaven. I'm sorry, I'm butchering the, uh, the quotation there, but his chief delight is in, in God himself. And the things of this world just pass in, into insignificance by comparison. We are to enjoy God, enjoy his glory, his majesty, his truth, his word. As we look to the scriptures, we should enjoy the revelation they make of his purposes, enjoy the, the wisdom uh, evident there and the way that God brought about our redemption. The, the way that God's justice is satisfied at the cross of Christ, the way God's mercy also is satisfied there as well. All these many things coming together in Christ so that we would be saved. We are to enjoy God forever and ever. So the chief end of man is that which should occupy our thoughts and our prayers. How am I doing in terms of glorifying God? Do I keep that as the focus of my life, or am I preoccupied with various activities and events of life, which we so often are? We need to bear in mind that uh, whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, we are the Lord's, and we should glorify Him for 